Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. We are back in our weekly prayer project. This week is going to be week 11 and it is called Not Shaken. And I'm so sorry, we are really gray and overcast today, so I'm getting shadows and I apologize for that. I've I've moved things, I've, you know, it's just not going to work. So right now we're just going to be thankful, we're not going to be shaken, and we're just going to move on through, okay? <laughs> All right, friends. So let's get started. We're on page, hold on, uh, 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 40. I want to think we we're on 40, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> okay. All right. Week 11, not shaken, page 40. So let's pray before I get started. And uh, whew, silly me, I'm just so excited to get in the lesson. All right. Um, let's, let's bow. All right. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together. We praise your name. Oh, Lord. It's such a busy time of the year, Lord, but I thank you that we have this time to come together in your name. Lord, I pray that as we go through this study today, that all that we say and do would be pleasing to you, Lord, and we ask you to forgive us where we failed you. We ask you to guide us in your steps and teach us what you'd have us to learn and then help us to apply it in our lives. Lord, thank you again for being with us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends, let's get started. All right. I just get so excited. <laughs> okay, so not shaken, page 40, week 11. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. So Hebrews 12, 28 through 29, New International Version. So consuming fire. And, and right now, if you're doing this in real time, you know, we've been dealing with those fires out in California, praying for those families and those people out there, guys. And, you know, when we think about fire, it, it can be all-consuming. So why is that our God is a consuming fire? Because he wants all of us. He doesn't just want bits here and bits there. He wants all of us. There's a really good book. I'll have to see if I can't find it again. I read it when I was a young young girl, probably in high school or college, and it talks about a house, my my heart, Christ's home. And it's a great, I'll see if I can order some. If any of y'all want them, they have like a devotional that's out. I'll see if I can find it. But if you do, email me privately, and I will be glad to send that on if I can find it. Um, anyways, it talks about the different parts of our home. Like, we have an attic, we have, you know, a bedroom and a kitchen and a closet and, you know, all the different areas. And, you know, and it, it uh, talks about how we, we have things that we tuck away in those back closets and we don't always give them completely to God. Or we, we give them to Him and we take them back and we put them back in the closet. You know, that kind of a thing. Or we put them in the, we put it out in the living room, you know, but it doesn't honor God. So you think about those things and, um, and know that our God wants every part of us. So, let's keep going because this gets better. It just gets better. Okay, you were created in God's perfect eternal kingdom. You were created for fellowship, my sweet friends. When he created Adam and Eve, he did that because he desired fellowship. We were created in his image, my sweet friends. He created us for fellowship. And you wonder, well... That's hard to do. You pray. Sometimes you think you're just sitting in dead air. But he's listening. He's waiting. And I was going to share this with you before, and I've forgotten last week's lesson, so I'm going to share it with you now. When I was a young girl, or, or you know, and I came to Christ, um, I kind of walked alone a little bit. And I didn't, you know, I'd always talk to the Lord, and I'd pray, and, you know, I talk a lot all the time to the Lord, because I live in the country. I kind of can't get away with it. But anyways, I find myself even talking... You know, anyways, I won't even go there. But anyways, so what I was going to say is I remember when my children were born and, you know, telling, talking to them about praying and how important it was. So I told them, every time you go to sleep, the Lord is with you. He takes care of you. He keeps you safe. You're able to rest in Him if you pray and you ask Him for a good night's rest. And then when you wake up, guess who's sitting on the foot of your bed waiting to talk to you? So sometimes when you wake up and we rush off and we run and we get going for the day and we forget. But guess what? He doesn't. He's always there with us. He created us 
to live in his perfect eternal kingdom for fellowship with him. And even while we're here on this earth, it is not a time that we forget that fellowship because that creates a relationship that as we go into eternity is even more sweeter, my sweet friends. So let's keep going. But you know, here's where it says, <laughs> but you aren't just killing time here on earth. Waiting for God to make all things new. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, you are already new. A new creation. So I marked that, and I thought we would read that. Okay, 2 Corinthians. Now which mark is it? Okay, here we go. So this is... Hold on. Sorry. It is my sweet husband. But I will call him right back. <laughs> okay. Bless his heart. Okay, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17. So, alrighty. Let's see here. Okay. And this Bible is so small. It's my pocket Bible that I carry with me. So, um, I, you know, like if I'm going to church on Sundays. Um, but anyways, here we go. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Be, be, oh, pardon me. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. I'm reading this terrible. Let me reread that. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. Therefore, and it was, pardon me, wrong one. I knew I, I'm having a terrible time with this lighting, can you tell? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. So as we come to Jesus, and he amazingly takes this broken lost person and he makes us whole he restores us he restores us he he forgives our sins he restores us he makes us new that is an amazing thought and if you don't know Jesus in a personal way and you have not had that part of your relationship happen pray to him ask him ask him to be the lord of your life ask him to make things new to pass the old away and to create a new a new person and that's what coming to Christ is and even if we're in our walk and we've known the Lord for a while we can still go back to him and say I got off the path I need I please wipe this away help me to to step out in a new relation as a new creation in in fellowship with him so all right Okay, let me keep going here. Huh, there's so much more. We could go on for hours here. This is such an amazing part of, of, of a salvation experience with Jesus. So, all right. Which parts of your life are shaking your faith right now? Whew, that's such a big thing. There's never a point in time in our walk with Jesus that we don't have times of difficulties and struggles and I gotta tell you you know even Billy Graham and all those amazing Christians that we've been privy to in this world they have their, they have daily struggles just like you and me Paul had daily struggles you know Saint Paul he had daily struggles um, he had a medical affliction that we don't even quite know what it was but we know that it, it was a struggle he battled daily so how do we get through that? What parts of your life are shaking your faith? Are you allowing them to take over? Sometimes they're, they are all-consuming. But if God is all-consuming, we can't have two things consuming us up. We'll just, we'll just split in two and be worn out. Who are we going to let be master of that? Are we going to let the bad situations master us? Or are we going to let God master it? And I'm saying this. As much to you, I've got three fingers pointing back at me. <laughs> you know how they say if you point at somebody, then you got these three fingers coming back at you. Yeah, I'm saying this more to me than I am to y'all. So, all right. Let's keep going. It's humbling. It's humbling, and that's okay. That's a part of being with the Lord. We're humbled. We're humbled by His majesty, His awesomeness, His, His incredible, unbelievably uh, amazing power. And tremendous love for us it's humbling we are humbled in his presence because he is God and so when we're on shaky ground 
He's trying to get us to firm to that firm foundation of Him. He's there. He's waiting. He's wanting to help you, my sweet friends. Let's keep going. List three things you can do this week that will matter in the eternal kingdom. Love a neighbor. Pray for a stranger. Serve others and the like. So, as I raised my children, there were things that were simple. We sat down to pray, and we thanked God immediately. We thanked Him for this day, and some of my children still pray that way. And it's a it's an amazing blessing to be a part of that. So, we can show love to those that may are that are maybe unlovely in our life, um, whether they be strangers or they be close family or they be good friends. We're, I mean, I'm unlovely a lot, so <laughs> I'm sure when people still love me, there are many times I am not lovely. So with that grace and mercy that's been extended to me, I must extend that back. Does that make sense? Okay. Another thing I wanted to share with you right here when we show love, and it said we pray. We pray for a stranger. So my husband and I drove into the city um, Saturday, yesterday. I had to stop and think, where are we? <laughs> so Saturday. And there was a, there's a cemetery in between. It's a, it looks like the world's tiniest cemetery on this road into the city. And it's, it's not quite country, but it's not quite city either. So you're on this road and, you know, there was some people who turned into that cemetery and I told my husband, I said, oh my goodness. I said, we come by here and they have a funeral so many times a week. I mean, I told him, I said, how in that tiny cemetery can they have so many people, you know, coming to a funeral? And he said, I don't know. He said, you know, it's just, I know there's farmland back there, but, you know, right now we just see, you know, we just see the cemetery area. So we we're talking about it. And then we got further closer to the city, and then we had to stop as, as the Hertz drove by and the long line of people. And I told my husband, I said, yeah, it was a funeral that we had stopped for before. Those were just the early, the early travelers. And I remember I've always stopped and prayed for all of those and looked them in the eye and, you know, tried to give a level of, you know, condolence or, you know, encouragement as they drive by and just prayed for them. And I mean, to the point where, you know, this particular day, um, I got to where I couldn't talk for a few minutes. I just had to stop. And, um, and I think sometimes when we, we pray for a total stranger and we take a moment and think about their day, there's a great song by Stephen Curtis Chapman. It says, if it were my last day, what would I do? Because he talked about a, a funeral driving by, but you know, a, a funeral processional. And you know, if this were my last day, what then would I do? And you know, I bow my head and said a little prayer for the people going by. And you know, I gotta tell you, even when we meet people along the way, and most people just pass by, and I do it a lot. I am not perfect in this in any way. But there are times where I will stop and, you know, say hello to people, look them in the eye, smile. You know, when most people are too busy. And I, I get busy too. So I, I just want to encourage all of us to stop, pray. Think about that person who's going to that cemetery or going into that hospital for surgery. Or, you know, who you just never know what's going on. Going in for that cancer treatment. Take a moment. Stop. Pray. Um, you meet the lady who has to wear a scarf because she's lost all of her hair. Or the child who has lost all their hair. And they're wearing a big bow on their, their head. Um, we had a little girl in our church who, when my children were little, she had, chemo, you know, she had a, a very dangerous form of cancer. And she had chemo. And um, so I told her, I said, when your hair comes back, I'm going to buy you so many bows. And she would just giggle. She was three or four years old at the time. And I remember when her hair came back. And I remember buying her those bows. And, you know, because she looked at me like, will my hair come back? And I said, your hair will come back. And um, anyways, just a word of encouragement. And, you know, I would buy her bows then too. But, you know, I would really buy her the ones with the big clippies. So anyways, but just that word of encouragement, encouraging somebody else in their journey. You never know what that means to that other person. You'll never know how much that'll touch the other person. And even the people that still seem grumpy, 
You never know. They may go home and say, you know, I was such a grump, but that was a really nice person, or that was such a nice smile that person had, or you never know. So, all right, let's keep going. So serve with a servant's heart. Do you serve others the way you think it should be done, or do you serve like Jesus served? And I think of the best servant on this earth, and it was Jesus. He didn't come as an earthly king. He came to serve. So I think about serving, and I try to focus in on that. And I, I get caught up in myself, and I forget over and over and over. But if I can encourage you, the next time you do something for somebody that, you know, maybe they're not super grateful, or maybe they're not nice about it, or maybe they complain. If you know you did it to the best of your very ability, just trust God. He'll bless it. And if all it does is bless God, way to go. Way to go, my sweet friends. Way to go. You'll never know who's watching you. Okay, keep going. Trust Him. You trusted Him with all your heart. You're not leaning on your own understanding. In all your ways, are you acknowledging Him? Because He's then going to direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So trust Him, my sweet friends. Trust Him. That's all He wants from you. Okay, do all if under the Lord, Colossians 3.23. I can quote it for you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it correctly because I probably just messed up the last verse too. So, <laughs> anyways, I always get like two or three versions memorized in one. Okay, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Oh, do you do your work as for the Lord? When you go in and you punch that clock, are you doing it for the Lord? When you scrub your sinks or your toilets in your house or you're cleaning up that baby at 3 in the morning and they've had an upset tummy, are you doing it as if unto the Lord? I can honestly say not always, but I can honestly say it's a blessing beyond our words when we do that, when we keep that focus, when we teach our children that. They are watching. They are watching, my friends. So I also pulled up Hebrews 13, 5. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it here. Because we all know I'm, I'm blind. So this is, um, this is the part two of this. And this is from the Old Testament. I believe I was thinking Deuteronomy. Okay, don't, don't quote me here. I don't see it in the, in the, and I can hardly read the in-between parts. So, you know. Okay. <laughs> so it says, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. That is God's promise to us. Hebrews 13, 5b. He will never desert us and he will never forsake us. So as we look at these things that we are called to do as believers, are we focused on that? I don't know. I mean, I can't say that I am. I, you know, always. No, I'd be lying if I said that. So, list three things you can do this week that will matter in the eternal kingdom. Love a neighbor. Pray for a stranger, serve others, and the like. If you would like, you can leave a comment below. You can share. You can not share. You can do whatever you like. But this channel is about encouraging each of us on. So if you list that, what you're doing to serve God, and don't do us, we're not, we're not doing it to be like, oh, look what I did. Here's my three badges. No, 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 no. I'm wanting... If you think you can do it in a humble way and encourage others on, please list them. Because sometimes people do things, and I don't even think about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. And so that encourages me next time to maybe do that a certain way. So, all right, my friends. It is time for me to quit talking and yakking. I'm just running on. But these lessons are so great, guys. Dig further. Pull your Bibles out. Find more scriptures. Add them in. Share with us your scriptures. Put them in the comments below. Show us where God led you in this, Bible's, in this Bible devotional study this week. I would love to be encouraged by each of you because I already am. All right, my sweet, dear friends, let's pray and I'll let you go. Oh, dear Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for so much of all that you do for us, God. Your word is amazing. You are amazing. You are awesome, God. And we so praise your name. Thank you for this time to come together. Help us to serve you and serve the creations that you have created well. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. All right, my friends. Serve him well. Um, I need to introduce the next week, and then I'm going to let you go. All right, so week 12 is joy and community. 
So that is all about us, being in community, serving Him together, or your church, your local church, your Bible study, wherever it is that God has you, or at work even. So we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, of the love that you have for all the saints. Colossians 1, 3-4, English Standard Version. So of course, those I believe, and I'm, anyways, just understand that what we do, others see. What we do, others see. And they're encouraged by that. All right, let's keep going. In these verses, Paul and Timothy told their friends that they thank God for them in their prayers because of their faith in Christ. One of the most rewarding parts of being Christian, being a Christian is having the hope of and joy of community. Who has God brought into your life to encourage you and support you? How have you been how how can you be a better encouragement and support for them? Oh, I love that. This is about this channel, guys. I love this. Anyways, the intent of this channel. Write God a thank you note for the godly people in your life. Thank God for the spiritual gifts you see in them. Wow. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, my sweet friends. I pray that your day is blessed, so creative, and so very, very lovely. Actually, I pray that for the whole week for each of you. And I count it a privilege, a privilege and a blessing to be here with you, to pray for you, um, to encourage you in any way I can. And, uh, yeah. So, all right, my friends. Keep serving Him well. He loves you so. All right, my friends. I will be talking to you soon. Take that promise and hold tight to it. Y'all have a great week. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.